Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in. This one's going to be fun. So it is uh, Groundhog Day. It is the Soar Valley update. And we're going to do a deep dive on her day one. Now, normally it does not take me this, or it takes me way longer to uh, get enough data and testing in order before I'll put out a video for you guys. Usually pe many people are blowing me away in uh, getting this content out to you, but I'm going to try to get it out first. So I feel like I've done enough testing this Soar Valley that you see to my right. That is on my free-to-play account. Um, we're going to go and do a deep dive on her. I'm going to tell you guys the correct way to gear her, uh, her correct usage, where you want to use her, where she excels, etc., etc. Um, up front, she is a summoner. She's a summoner, another summoner character, but she is a healer support CC. So where Anpu came out and he was looked like he was just CC, Sorvali turns Anpu into a damage dealer, like on par with Daniel. I'm not lying. And then she is the team's healer, and she's going to add more CC. So uh, a summoner team was already countering Leo. She makes it... They're, they're obviously pushing for a summoner meta and a vanguard meta. And she is the final piece of the puzzle for the summoner meta PvP team. So let's dive in. Um, what else can I say? I'm really impressed by her. I, I, but then again, I have all the pieces at Immortal, so my testing was really fun. Um, so carry or come along, guys. Let's do a deep dive on her. Stay tuned after the recorded footage. And uh, we're going to jump back to, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one here. And I'm going to show you guys some recorded footage that I have taken for PvP. You want to stay tuned for that. All right, guys? Okay, so let's move over. Let's uh, go into the deep dive. So strap in. All right, so there was my Jiggle Queen herself, Sor Valley. I realized I was saying her name wrong, like I thought I was in the uh, update video. That came up prior to this one. So as you see, she's not quite immortal yet. I am a little bit uh, reticent to put out a video on her gear, to, given that she's so new. But given some of the testing that I've, I've done and given some of the feedback within my Alliance cluster, I think I can confidently say that this guide video uh, on how to gear, how to build is going to work for you guys. So let's dive directly into the gear. Directly into the gear because, again, like I say every time, that's why everybody's here. So as you see, I have one Hawkeye set and two Vigorous sets. Now I have seen somebody try an attack set as well. So one Hawkeye, one Vigorous, one attack. But uh, on testing, she doesn't do a whole bunch of damage. She's not a damage dealer. She is a healer slash CC slash support for your summoners. And she does that job really well. Uh, and oddly enough, she actually turns Anpu into a damage monster. We were all so critical of Ampu's damage, and now Sarvali comes along and is like, here, let me help you. Watch this. Go destroy. So two ha or one Hawkeye, two Vigorous set is what I'm recommending. I already have her up on my spreadsheet. The link is in the description of this video. Uh, that sp spreadsheet shows you how to gear every character in the game with video links, like to this video. So you want to run her HP primary hands, HP primary head, HP primary boots. And then on secondaries on these, you want to be looking for attack, defense, and accuracy. As you see, I got one accuracy plus one right there. I missed the mark there, didn't get any accuracy, but I got accuracy plus one right there. I got accuracy plus one right there. And on the top, you want to be looking for HP, attack, accuracy, and defense substats. Mainly your most important ones are probably going to be HP and accuracy, followed by attack and then defense. So as you see, that one's got an attack plus one, accuracy plus one, accuracy plus one, attack plus one, HP. And then this one, accuracy plus one, attack, and then X HP. So you get the point. Look for uh, HP primary hands, head, and feet. And then be looking for at, uh, HP secondaries, accuracy, attack, and defense. And then now let's dive into her kit. All right, so what is her ultimate? Sor Valley. So Varley. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See how, see the spelling right there? It says Sovarli, but then look at her name in the bottom right hand, left hand corner. Sor Valley. Which is it, guys? Wow. 
I'm gonna say Sore Valley because a Sore Valley is just easy to remember. So Sore Valley throws her spear, opening a dream gate at the target location. It looks like just a big blue um, AOE circle. Like, you know how like uh, Daniel's bear has the big blue EMP circle? This one's kind of like green glowing goodness, like life type stuff on the floor. Very, very, reminds me very much of like the, the green dragons from WoW. So opens up a dream, a dream gate, which drains the HP of all the units within range for 1.6% uh, of her Sorvalli's, Sor Sorvalli's, yeah. See there, they said they spelt it right. Sorvalli's max HP per second. So it's six seconds, which can be increased with her exclusive. And the percentage goes up with her level. Uh, so she's gonna drain them of HP. Uh, and then she, for, and then she's going, or for her, based on her HP. Wow, I stumbled that one. And then she's going to use that HP and heal her allies. So this is where her healing comes into effect. And the talent modifier says when the dream gate opens, it has a base chance of 50% affected by her accuracy. This is where uh, accuracy comes into play to imprison the enemies within range. Imprison is an anti-displacement, anti-Leo, anti-Crete, anti-Assassin, anti-Bailey mechanic so keep that in mind so the, this is where she is more of a pvp focused tune as we said in the introduction because she, you're going to use her to counter the meta the current meta in in pvp uh so yeah she has a chance to imprison based on her accuracy so it, it, just from her ultimate you see that hp is really important and accuracy is important now her next skill sor valley uh, summons one deer spirit with 55 percent of her attack and defense and 12 percent of her hp so it's they're not going to be health they're not going to be doing a whole lot of a damage they're not going to be a whole lot of uh, uh they're going to die really quickly but they're going to feed ampu these are what are going to feed ampu because you can have four deer spirit out at all times and she's going to get them up fairly quickly uh up to four deer spirits like i just said can be present on the battlefield at any time right or any one time and then the level breaks they just gain uh, more attack defense and hp and the talent modifier summon a deer spirit to start a battle. So she's going to be going in already with one uh, summon up on the table, right? So Daniel's going to get his uh, his his uh, summon proc out fast. Ampu's going to be blowing stuff up fast, you know. And keep in mind that all the summons do a soul shock from Ampu. So if she has four on the field that are dying. That's a lot of extra, you know. And the damage, you're going to see the damage from other people's summons dying shows up as and Pooh's damage, not hers. So even though her damage meter looks like it's gonna suck, that she's gonna get all that, a bunch of damage from her deer blowing up based on Anpu's kit that shows up under his name. So she is technically kind of doing damage. It's just, you're gonna, it's gonna be reading through Anpu's beater. So summon a deer at the start of battle. Uh, next one, the Dream Locker Spears. So Sorvalli throws a spear at the nearest enemy within range. So think like Bailey porting over to kill her, or think L Leo coming to kill her. Um, she's gonna fire an arrow at them, inflicting 16% of her max HP as damage. And then this skill has a 70% base chance, and then it's affected by her accuracy uh, to reduce the healing received by that target for 60 by 60% 60 for four seconds, which is huge. That's very, very, very huge. Right? If Bailey can't get heals, if Leo can't get heals, we don't know if that means he can't life drain. But even if even if he can still life drain, not getting heals is a big thing. Talent modifier when the user throws the spear at, and the target is within three meters, like I said, like Leo or Bailey, the user will jump th three meters away. So Sir Valley will jump away from the target and create some space, which is going to help keep her alive to do all of her goodness for the summoner team. And then her passive, when any allied unit other than her deer summons die, Sorvalli has a 7% chance, again, affected by accuracy, to summon another deer spirit based on the level of Dark Moon Dreamer. Based on the level of Dark Moon Dreamer. So that is this. So that's based on basically your like level, like 220, one, uh, where is it? Those are all by level. Uh, it doesn't say it now. So that's interesting. So she's going to summon more deer spirits based on her level of her ultimate. That's a weird mechanic. So she's not going to work very well at low levels. Huh. All right. And then the chances increase by either, either all of her other level breaks. Remember, the level breaks are determined by your actual level, like 180, 200, 220, 240. 
The talent modifier for her passive is when Sorvali casts a skill, she has a chance of summoning one deer spirit behind her. So she's gonna come into battle with the deer spirit, and then every time she tas uh, casts a skill or does a skill, she's gonna um, summon, has a chance, doesn't say how much, but has a chance to summon another deer spirit. So cool, plus she also has a chance uh, to summon one after one dies. So you do really want accuracy on her because without accuracy, it starts, it's really, really low. The base chance starts at seven, goes up to nine. So, and she, she needs to get her summons out of the field. So you do need some accuracy, which is which also lends credence to me saying you need a Hawkeye set. You really, really do. You can't not have ac accuracy on Sir Valley. So that's her kit. Let's look at her talents really quickly. Um, so she does have some resist. I like resist on my summoners because of all of the CC in PVP now, resist is actually really handy to avoid those stuns, etc. right? So that's good stuff. Get all the big talents and then get all of the health talent, mini talents, and then it's up to you. I'm gonna recommend getting this resist one too because I think resist is gonna help you in PVP. Uh, you could skip the defense, but if it's your PVP team, you may wanna consider putting defense too. That's up to you. And then now let's look at her exclusive really quick. As you see, I'm one away from 20, one away. Oh, oh well. So Broken Dream, that's what you get on Unlock. Uh, the Broken Dream Enhancement, uh, base chance increased by six. So let's go back to her kit. Broken Dream is her passive. So that is the chance that she's gonna summon new deer, deer spirits after one dies. So increased by 6% chance, which means instead of seven, it's 13, 14, 15, right? Up to 15% chance. Uh, for me, it's 15% chance. So she has a 15% chance and then modified by accuracy to summon more deer spirits out on the field. And then the level 10 Dream Locker Spear, which if you guys need a reminder, it's this one right here. It's the one where she's gonna stop stop healing and she's gonna jump away from the target, right? So Dream Locker Spear Enhancement. Enemies that are hit by the spear have a 70% base chance, again, modified by accuracy, of being imprisoned. Now, what is imprisoned again? It's a mechanic we got in Ampu's kit. It renders them unable to move or cast displacement skills. So if Leo comes in and she hits him with the spear and then jumps away, he can't use his uh, his ultimate, <coughs> which is his displacement skill. Crete can't do his little pushback. Bailey can't move, can't jump away. Uh, Randall can't port right you get the point very very cool that's very important and then the level 20 dream gate enhancement summon two deer spirits to the target location that one is also really really huge dream gate is going to be the the her ultimate so this one normally it's just um drain hp and heal but her exclusive is going to make it so that skill i think it's guaranteed guaranteed to summon Deer spirits, yes, summon two deer spirits to the target location. So instead of a 15% chance to summon a de deer spirit based on, and then based on accuracy, she's guaranteed to get two summons out right away. So the 20 is in my opinion, mandatory. Now the 30, uh, the duration of dream gate is extended by four seconds. Now this is her heal and it's also a life siphon. So I think that if if she is a long-term character, if she is long-term viable in PvP, her 30 is worth it. I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm gonna sit on it because the Vanguard team is still good. I'll vacillate between those two. Um, some people are already taking their Anpu up to 30. If I'm gonna take my Anpu up to 30, then I'm gonna probably take Servali up to 30, right? So do that. If you're gonna take her up to 30, just you're gonna take Daniel up to 30 and you're gonna take Anpu up to 30 as well. So is it worth it? In my opinion, no, but if you're gonna go all in on the summoner team, then yes. So that is Sor Valley. Um, I have some video recordings to show you guys of where she's useful and she's mainly useful in PVP, but I do want, I did save one little bit for you. Like I said, I said it in my other video, so not, not, not this one, but I haven't tested her in Guild Hunt yet. That I'm interested for. I haven't tested her in Alter yet because, well, I know she's gonna do good in Alter because I'm just blowing that boss away, so delay that. But I'm curious how she's gonna do in Guild Hunt at um, Turbine 12, which is the one I'm tasked to hit. And uh, PvP, she's really good. That's some footage I have to show you. 
But right now, I want to show you guys this. So this is my main account. So this is Purgatory. I've, I've, I can sweep it, but I'm not going to sweep it. So here's a team for you guys. This is this is not the team I run in Arena, but this is a full summoner team. It has the four SSS summoner characters. And then, <clears throat> you know, you're going to want to probably run Senway, but with a healer, Senway has, or my Muka is built tanky, and he's effective in PvP that way, but he's also got lifesteal. I got him up to to exclusive 10 and Servali heals. So between the life steal and the healing, just watch. And he's got a lot of, Muka's got a lot of adds, Servali's got a lot of adds, Daniel's got a lot of adds, and Anpu's got a lot of adds, which gives, um, which puts, uh, basically racks up Anpu damage. So <clears throat> let's do this. Oh, my voice is cracking. I'm gonna leave the damage meter up. This is purgatory. Keep in mind, my guys are level like 236. So see, uh, Daniel's winning right now, but Ampu, every time he uses his ultimate with all of these adds up and as they die, he's gonna actually keep up. So like, boom, there you go. And look at Ampu. Ampu is keeping up with Daniel. Now then he'll fall behind and then he'll do some burst. So as everyone dies, like look at all the zombies are both dead and there he just exploded them. I have four, I, I see four deer out in the field. So the deer are coming out and there Ampu's ahead. So, I was, as I was saying earlier, we all slept on Ampu and everybody, I, I still see videos today saying he sucks, he doesn't do damage. This is the proof in the pudding. And this is a, this is a Sir Valley video. And she's, this fight alone kind of gives her credit because of how much healing she's doing. Like Muka is still up in Purgatory Boss. Everybody's still relatively healthy, but the turbine is gonna start hitting harder. But I just, I had to point out to you guys, look at how much damage Ampu does with Sorvali's summons. All those shocks. Now just imagine if you had him at X30, and he's gonna be shocking twice. He is going to be a damage god. <laughs> he is, he is. And Sorvali, to her credit, is just a facilitator of summoners in general with her heal and then Ampu for his damage. So uh, let's let this play out because I didn't let it play out earlier. I got down to 9%. As you see, he's hitting harder. So um, Skur and Hattie is, is she's getting down there. Muka's getting down there because they're all in PVP range. Um, what am I at? 16%. I'm, I'm confident. So here comes a big old Ampu hit. Wham! I'm confident that they're going to survive because he's at 4%. Uh, Muka just died. Three, two, one. Look at the damage meter. 120, 110, Ampu Daniel. That is crazy. So no healer, no tank, end game content, new to level 240 end game content, Servali Ampu getting her done together. I think they are really, those two are really tied to the hip. They, they go really well together as you just saw in this video. So now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, concerns, um, commanders, obviously you're gonna run enlightened commander. Um, I'm f looking right now, you wanna look for, I think you really wanna look for either Daniel Servali or Daniel um, Anpu as the main um, people on your enlightened commander. So go fishing guys, go looking for that. So now let's go look at some PVP gameplay where she really shines. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that was a kind of a highlight of PVE for all you PVE junkies. Um, you could probably sign off now, but if you care about PVP, you're going to want to see this. So I have a whole lot of video footage of me fighting different levels of people all the way from 2.1 to uh, 3. But then there was this one guy in my arena, you know, you know, I don't want to discredit him too much because he's a spender. He's in one of the higher guilds um but i haven't been able to beat him because he's just surpassed me he's just skyrocketed way past me so venom if you're watching this shout out to you bud so let's move over to the other screen and now there he is right there look at 
four is his arena team. He is like Karaz is in my uh, the the main guild in my in my cluster. He's a beast, and Burz is a beast. Venom, three point four. Like this guy has dropped a butt ton of money lately because he just came out of nowhere, just right up to the top of the ladder. So he's three point four. So there's and here look it he's got a bunch of hyper evolves now on this team he's only gonna have Crete hyper evolved but it's a level 65 hyper evolved Crete and the rest are all 240 he hasn't hyper well obviously you can't hyper evolve Leo you could do or Daniel you can do Masrani but he did Crete first so that is crazy to show you guys just to, just to give you a little, another little preface look at his total combat power is 14.1 so here's my team we're running, you see, 236, 236. And we'll maybe play this a couple times. Because you got to see this thing. It's a thing of beauty. An absolute thing of beauty. I'm going to pause it here because i got to give you guys some caveats. So one caveat with this team. You see how it's a Bailey? A Bailey team? Uh, Bailey's going to go after whoever has the uh, lowest HP. So you have to make sure that Rez... Has your lowest HP. So right now, I think he's at 1.2. And I have my amp, which is the next one, at um, 1.3. Because Rez can, like, skedaddle. He'll, like, sh sh juke and jive. And, uh, and since Bailey can't move, he has to port. He's kind of going to get stuck. So there we go. See Bailey's at the back. He's actually... It's funny, because Bailey's actually attacking Sorvali's deer. So I guess I can just make Rez healthier because and it's weird that she's not attacking her valleys you normally yeah it's just weird but he, he's attacking her deer so then he moves away as you see leo leo came in here he got stunned and then he just got pushed away and now you see rez is going to come in and he's going to power up ampu again you see leo's ultimate meter it's not quite there yet i'm going to beat him to it so there goes ampu and now here he goes boom leo is stunned again now he does his ultimate but you see how he did his ultimate way up here? So when he comes in close, what he's killing... You see there's a dead deer. There's two dead zombies. He's killing Mooka. Mooka's wolves. He's killing a crap ton of summoned adds. And remember, those summoned adds, when they die, they do that soul shock, right? So what do they do? Well, there's a mechanic in Ampu's kit where every time he takes damage from soul shock... And I think it's called soul shock. Then it lowers his resistance to that damage for subsequent soul shock so subsequent explosions from summons are going to do more damage so all these adds muka's wolves uh, and poo's zombies uh then servali's deer they're all gonna just stack just stack the damage on him and look at look at the damage meter it's all it's the ampu show it is the ampu show so I'm gonna let I'm gonna keep stopping at this one just to to talk to you guys. Then we're gonna let it run through in its entirety. Now you see that that was a thing of beauty. So stunned Leo pushed him back right on top of Daniel's bear. Like Leo hasn't done other than that one spin, he hasn't done anything. And this is a 3.9 no 3.4 team versus my 2.3. Leo's just standing up here, and the bear is just killing everybody. Ampu's going to do another big hit right now. And boom! Leo's dead. And look at Crete and, uh, and, uh, blah, blah, blah. Artists have just been stuck up here the whole time because they've been imprisoned. They've just been imprisoned the whole time. So I lost my Mooka, but Mooka did the job right away, getting his ads out, taking the hits, dying, holding off Leo for a little bit. It's just, a th this thing just synergizes so well. Here, let me turn. I got music on in two different sources here. Okay, so now I'm going to let this thing play out straight through without stopping it. So you can see it, how fast it is. So there he is, 3.4. Hyper Evolved. This is going to be a long video, guys. I'm sorry. So we're going to do a little challenge here. So there it is. All my guys are level 236. Daniel's 237. I'm running Enlightened with the Summon Prototype. 
And since my phone is hot when I was recording this, it's taken a long time to start. And there's going to be a little bit of a stutter at the beginning. Come on. T -t 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 Today, Junior. All right, here we go. So keep an eye on Leo and Pooh and Sir Valley. So boom. Bailey's not dead yet, but he's going after uh, Daniel's uh, hawk. So boom. Now Bailey's dead. Here comes Leo. He's going to kill all those ads. He's going to take all those soul shocks to the face. And then Ampu's going to go boom. Get out of here on top of that bear. Oh, no, now Bailey dead. Sir Valley's going to put a dream gate on uh, Crete. So Crete's not going to move. He's going to be stuck up top there. Not going to do a thing. Leo's dead. Moz is dead. Now the whole team just goes boom as soon as Ampu goes off. Whack. Magic. It's magic. I'm interested to see. I, ca I guarantee you that uh, Venom will have that team in uh, as his defense now after seeing that I finally beat him with a, a crap team. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a long one, but this was a fun one. Now, there was this was she's a really complex character. Summoners in general right now are really complex. I understand that it's an expensive team and the fact that you're not only going to have to have Daniel, but if you've been playing since before Christmas, you should have a highly developed Daniel because they were the Christmas events were so good. Um, and Pooh, a little bit more difficult, um, but it, it, whatever you got him up to, um, use Gene Hybrids on him, get him up there, but take him up in, in tandem with Sir Valley because Sir Valley and Ampu, as you've seen in PvE and PvP, just they, they, they lift each other up to the point where and Pooh's damage rivals Daniel's. You saw in that PvP match, it blew Daniel out of the water. Like, there was no comparison. And Pooh was the damage dealer. Because all those summons, when they die, are doing soul shocks, and that damage is getting recorded on his meter. So it's not him. It's, it's, it is him doing the damage, but he is dependent on multiple summon characters. So the more characters you can have there that do summons, the better, which is why I don't like Skur and Hattie, because they have one, and if that summon dies, then Skur dies. Um... And then Kalaza. Same thing with Senway. Senway's only got one summon. Kalaza is just... He's meh. It's, it's, it's a thing of beauty that Mooka's on the team. But Mooka, I built him like a tank. Uh, I have him X10. He's got a lot of lifesteal. And he's got a lot of summons. Like, he gets his wolves out there pretty quick. So, ladies and gentlemen, wow. Uh, comment below. Uh, Dryad. Dryad's going to be the word of the day. If you've made it 27 minutes into my video, I love you. <laughs> so put Dryad down in the comments. Pass this video around. If you are waiting, wanting to know, is she good? Yes. But in a fully developed summoner team. She's great. Looks like she's going to be great in PvE. With Anpu, Daniel, Muka. She's great in PvP, as you just saw. I just punched over, uh, over a million combat power above my weight in PvP. But, like I said, you need her up there. You need Anpu up there. You need Daniel up there. Uh, Muka, you should have up, up there because they've just thrown Muka at us lately. Uh, who is the other person on that team? Muka, Daniel, and Pooh. Who am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, Rez. Rez is easy. You can run Rez early. All right. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, dry out is the word of the day. Put that down in the comments. I will see you in the next one. I really hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the in the comments below. The spreadsheet for how to gear her, um, the... the, the the master spreadsheet, to how to gear every character. The link is in the description along with my Discord, along with my uh, download link, along with my blue stacks. Like, uh, click them all. So, till next time, guys. Cheers. Peace. Bye-bye.